Hello, everybody. This is Brian David Johnson, and you are listening to the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast as a part of the IEEE Computer Magazine and the column for Science Fiction Prototyping. And this month, we've got, we're, we're using the podcast to go a little bit deeper into uh, this month's column, which is about six insights about science fiction prototyping. And those six insights come from six students who are in my strategic uh, foresight class at the California College of Art in uh, San Francisco, California. And in this interview, we actually brought three of the students together. We have Ali, Letty, and Julia. And they thought it would be interesting for the three of them to get together and talk about their experiences. They were very, very excited to start using science fiction prototyping as, as quickly and as early as possible. And so they had applied it very specifically to a piece of work in a different assignment that I had given them. And they brought it in and started using it there as well. And each of them, I think, has a different perspective and a different uh, insight into what they learned as they really applied science fiction prototyping to the work that they were doing. So let's listen to my interview with them. Okay, Ali, Letty, Julia, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Of course. So the three of you have been working together on this project and you've taken different scenarios and different works of foresight and you started applying science fiction prototyping as another tool to get a better understanding of the future and to really broaden out your work um, as foresight practitioners. So Ali, how did you how did you apply it? How did you actually use it? Well, we have been working on this very nebulous project of the Uberization of public housing. Um, and as kind of our first go at this, we spent a lot of time with heavy research, you know, very traditional kind of aspect of creating scenarios, your transformation, growth, uh, collapse, and constraint. And we each took one or two of them, of these scenarios, and dove deeper into them, kind of blew them out, and tried to articulate them for not only ourselves, but for the general public, looking at, you know, this very large topic of public housing, which not many people know great depth about. Um, but then we realized after creating these scenarios that something was missing, uh, that you know this was a huge scope. We had spent so much time distilling our own research and we realized it was very hard for other people to do the same thing in a very short amount of time. Um, it was really a difficult subject to understand and it was way too dry and very data driven. Um, and so what we realized is that we needed something to liven it up. And what we did was create a framework, not only of academic, which is kind of research-based, but also using sci-fi prototyping, we added in the human and social element to help give like life and breadth to these scenarios we were depicting and kind of help our readers or our audience join us in the future of right. public housing. So being able to take this very, very big, very important, but very big subject of public housing mm -hmm. and using that science fiction prototyping is one of the tools that allows you to bring it down to a human level. So let me, right. what was human about it? What, what made it human? I think what, what made it human to us, um, first of all, we found that it helped us at least paint a picture to our, ourselves. Um, as, as Ali mentioned, we were working with this broad amount of data, and uh, you know we we each picked the one or two scenarios. Um, but then when we came back to each other, had a hard time kind of really describing those worlds to ourselves. And so once we applied the, the science fiction prototyping and developed this common character that we can then apply ourselves to and kind of put ourselves in the shoes and walk through the world. We were able to see you know, the differences in the different uh, in the four scenarios that we were working with and we could tell whether or not we were pushing far enough and really um, build on the visual of what these potential worlds would be. And so, and it was, and it was fascinating what came out of it, right? Because you did go from the very broad of to the very, very specific. You created this this one character, and then it allowed you different lenses into what those possible futures would look like. So we went from broad to the specific, and I think it had a great effect. Now, now, Julia, you had a very particular um, experience with your mom of being able to speaking of being able to communicate this out to disparate um, audiences. Yes. What was like? What happened with your mom? So as mentioned, we were working on an ambitious and ambiguous project, the future of public housing Uberized. It's a mouthful. And my mother, Patience Joy, was visiting over the weekend, and I was trying to explain the project to her. She's incredibly smart. She's a soil scientist. But she looked at me like I was speaking another language. She was like, Uber what? My articulation on the subject was going nowhere. So I opened my computer, and I began reading her these 
stories that we had come up with, and the first of the four science fiction stories. And it was like she got it. She suddenly got it. She understood despair in one scenario and the hope and optimism in the other. And she became fascinated with our project. And my mother and I were, were able to have a lengthy discussion about our project, which was pretty exciting. I think that's one of the powerful things we found with science fiction prototyping is it does give people a language to have these very complex conversations, but it makes them very, very personal. Mm -hmm. Wilson, I want to thank the three of you for your work, especially on the, the, the future of public housing, again, no small steps, but also for your application of science fiction prototyping and for joining me on the podcast today. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I like the perspectives of Ali, Letty, and Julia. Um, I think it's a very pragmatic way of looking at science fiction prototyping and what it can do for a process, how you can use it not only as a thing kind of in and of itself, but that you could use it in lots of other places and that it actually could be a thing that each of the different members used. Uh, but I was particularly struck by Julia's. Um, response that really what it allowed her to do is it allowed her mother to understand the work that she was doing and again I think this goes back to the the fact that science fiction prototyping and science fiction really lowers the bar and gives really anybody a way to understand and to visualize and to understand the experience of the future of these different possibilities and that we can use science fiction prototyping to communicate really complex ideas to people who may not be in our field, may not be in our class, may not be in our different work groups, but by using science fiction, they can understand it very quickly. And I thought that was just a great encapsulation of how science fiction prototyping could be used. Thank you very much for joining me on the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. As always, if you have any ideas for upcoming columns or if you have um, any science fiction prototypes that you would like to share with the audience, you can always get in touch with me at brian.david.johnson at intel.com, or you can always find me on Twitter. I'm at Intel Futurist. Uh, please remember, this is one of four podcast that we have around the six insights about science fiction prototyping, the, the column this month from the IEEE Computer Magazine. Um, so have a listen to those, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks.